Good day everyone! I'm Teacher Julie and for today's lesson, we're going to discuss promoting digital citizenship. What is digital citizenship? Digital citizenship is defined as the norms of appropriate and responsible behavior with regard to technology use. This is the ability to safely and responsibly access digital technologies while also being an active and respectful member of society in both online and offline. What about digital citizen? On the other hand, when we say digital citizen, it is a person who acquires the skills and information required to use the internet and digital technology successfully. They are also people who engage and participate in society and politics by using digital technology and the internet in suitable and ethical ways. Anyone who uses current digital technologies is basically a digital citizen. But Always remember that a good digital citizen is someone who is aware of the numerous challenges that come with the amazing benefits of technology. As a future educator, why do we need to teach digital citizenship? We need to teach digital citizenship to our students because number one, it keeps students safe. Keeping students safe and secure is a top priority whether in the virtual world or not. Second, it fosters important, time-honored ethical beliefs, character, and values such as respect, kindness, compassion, and virtue. Number three, it allows students to take their place as contributors in 21st century global community. Number four, it empowers students to learn with others and to take advantage of the wealth of powerful web resources and new technologies. Going on, for us to understand the complexity of digital citizenship and the issues of technology use, abuse, and misuse, Mark Rebo has identified nine elements that together make up digital citizenship. Teacher Julie, what are the nine elements of digital citizenship? The first element of digital citizenship is digital access. Digital access refers to full electronic participation in society. Inside the classroom, when we are integrating ICD-related topics, we must make sure that all of the students have an equal access to digital tools like computers, digital cameras, and the internet and also providing time and equipment for the students with special needs and making students aware of locations and resources that they can use inside the classroom. The second one is the digital commerce or e-commerce or electronic commerce is the buying and selling of goods and services or the transmitting of funds or data over an electronic network, primarily the internet. For example, is subscribing and purchasing media using tools like iTunes. The third one is digital literacy. It is the ability to use information and communication technologies to find, evaluate, and create, also communicate information requiring both cognitive and technical skills. Evaluating online resources to make sure they are truthful and accurate. Learning how to find information on a specific topic on the internet. It is important to understand that even digital natives who know how to send a text message and to post in social media are not always being considered as digitally literate. Because digital literacy and education encompasses so much more. For example, students must have a specific skills when reading online texts that may contain embedded resources such as hyperlinks, audio clips, graphs, or charts that require students to make choices. So, students today are also being asked to create, collaborate, and share digital content and to do so responsibly. For these reasons, principals, schools, librarians, and teachers need to understand the importance of digital literacy skills for students and teaching digital literacy inside the classroom. 
The fourth one is the digital etiquette. When you say digital etiquette, it is using technology in a way that doesn't affect others negatively. You have the integrity or sense of self-management and general responsibility for your actions on the internet and treating people like you would in real life. You can do this by using technology only when it is appropriate and respecting others online by not posting information that is hurtful or untrue. The fifth one is the digital rights and responsibilities. According to Rebo and Daily 2007, it is the privileges and freedom extended to all digital technology users and the behavioral expectations that come with them. We all have the right to have an access to technology, but we must always bear in mind that we need to be responsible digital citizens. So, some of examples of our digital responsibilities are following acceptable use policies, using technology responsibly, reporting inappropriate use of technology resources, and helping to stop the spread of fake news. So, let's go on to number six, which is digital security. Digital security means protecting your computer, mobile devices, tablets, and other internet-connected devices from intruders, which could be in the form of hacking, phishing, and more. Digital security could also be used to protect your personal data from being used and sold by companies. We can protect our hardware and network security by using secure and secret passwords. And we can protect our personal security by not posting personal information online and by not clicking any suspicious and malicious messages and links. Number 7 is Digital Health and Wellness. Digital wellness refers to being physically, socially, and emotionally healthy amidst our technologically centered world. We can do this by using proper hand placement and posture when keyboarding, and balancing time spent using digital tools with the time spent offline. Number eight is digital law. Digital law is defined as electronic responsibility for actions and deeds. In other words, digital law refers to what you are and are not allowed to do while using the internet. We must keep in mind that we need to understand how to use and share music, photos, and movies legally. Second, create original works that are free from plagiarism and respect the privacy of others and the integrity of networks in terms of passwords and data. And the last, or number nine, is digital communication. When we say digital communication, it is any type of communication that relies on the use of technology. It's like what we are having right now. It allows us to share our ideas and opinions even if we are far from each other. In this, exchanging information are done using email, cellular phones, instant messaging, text messaging, web pages, and blogs, and we ease it. As a future educator, how are we going to promote and model digital citizenship and responsibility to our students? First, teachers must understand local and global societal issues and responsibilities in an evolving digital culture and exhibit legal and ethical behavior in their professional practices. Second, advocate, model, and teach a safe legal and ethical use of digital information and technology, including respect for copyright, intellectual property, and the appropriate documentation of sources. Next is model digital etiquette and responsible social interactions related to the use of technology and information. The third one is develop and model cultural understanding and global awareness by engaging with colleagues and students of other cultures using digital age communication and collaboration tools.